gopher tortoises um, represent a uh, species that's in decline. It's estimated that their populations have decreased by at least 80% over the past uh, 100 years. The main reason for their decline is uh, human development of their territory, of their habitats. Actually, gopher tortoises are considered a, a keystone species, which is a biological term for a species that has a, a huge effect on other species. The burrows uh, that they dig uh, end up being homes for uh, over 300 different species, and there are some species that uh, are so dependent on the burrow that if tortoises weren't here, they would die out as well. So for the uh, turtles that are left, we want to uh, try to find out as much as we can about them and try to preserve their, what habitat is left. The main purpose of the robot is to investigate uh, burrow inhabitants, namely gopher tortoises, uh, for use in determining population dynamics. Well, when determining population, um, just the, the population size, or if you want to look at uh, the dynamics, whether it's more adults, more juveniles, how many are sharing burrows, how many are digging individual burrows, this is typically done by bucket trapping and opportunistic finding. However, this can be extremely time consuming and very season specific. You can only go when the tortoises are active. Uh, the robot you can use any time of the year. It takes about a fraction of the time because you don't have to wait for the, the turtle to be outside of the burrow or to fall in the bucket. You can just drive the robot in and see if there's a turtle in there or not. My partner in it, the engineer, he had been doing a bunch of different uh, robotic projects and I was doing biology work. And so together we were kind of talking and why haven't you know he built a robot to go down in the gopher tortoise burrows and film. So we proposed it both to our uh, different advisors for each different field and we had then applied for a seed grant and we were given a grant by the school to build it. Probably the biggest challenge was figuring out how it was going to operate and go uh, underground. So that's where they came up with the idea of putting cameras on so that they could see where it was driving. So they've got a camera on the front and the back so they can see it uh, going into the burrow and then again coming out. Then it was all really trying to get everything where it would be the right size to actually be able to go down the burrow. Uh, the robot is controlled by a differential drive track system that's connected to a controller and this is all connected to the robot via a tether. Uh, you use a USB connection to actually view the live feed connected to the computer and then you will drive the robot in via the front camera, switch to the back camera when you need to drive it right back out. With other robot systems, typically a cable is run down a burrow via PVC tubing of some kind. This is, you don't have much control over these types of, of camera systems. However, ours is driven via a differential drive track system. It's controlled completely by you. You can turn, you can go down different chambers in the burrow if there is any present. And if there's any turns in the burrows, you're not gonna encompass any problems. Um, the few problems we do have with the current model, and we're actually designing a new model right now to um, overcome these problems, is the tracks. The tracks are mainly used for uh, smooth services. It's very difficult to find tracks that are that small. And so we, if it's uh, had just rained the day before or is, is very, very dry outside, the tracks can get filled up with sand and get, and get clogged, in which case you then have to pull the robot out of the burrow uh, manually. The other problem we encountered was the size. Now, we're definitely able to go into adult burrows readily, easily, but we're not able to go into juvenile burrows. So when we're doing population analysis, we're only able to determine an adult population size using our robot. So the new design is going to be about half the size. Uh, most of the components are going to be housed externally, and only the uh, two motors, the two cameras, and the two LED lights will actually be in the robot, making it about half the size. And in that case, we'll be able to go into a variety of different burrows. I think just Mining Pro is just a really good interdisciplinary project for students from different departments to see that even though they're studying biology they can come over to engineering and there's definitely things they can work together on and collaborate and come up with something that they probably wouldn't have on their own. We see future uses definitely in determining population size. It, it's critical to know accurate population size when you're trying to conserve a species, when you're trying to determine what's appropriate for a specific piece of land. And this can easily be used by researchers. It's very, very cost effective. It's very, very cheap, which is good for students and teachers who are on a tight budget. And it can really reduce the time it takes to look at a population.